Okay, if you look up here on your navigator, you'll see something called reference view tables and some default tables. Okay? And inside here is a table labeled analog input, analog output. You've got genius global input, internal output, register, system, temporary. Those are all those are all your memory areas that you have that you can utilize. Okay? I'm going to bring up the input table. You double click on it, bring up the input table, and it's going to load up. Okay? And come over here. And we take a look at this. And if you look up here on the top, I wonder if there's a way to zoom in on that. I guess there's not. Okay. And it looks like we can see this okay. You start over here with input one. Input one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. They're in groups of eight all the way across. Okay. And if I click on one, if I click on one anywhere, it tells me it's a data type binary. Here is the value for this grouping. And I'm looking at input 25. It's being updated. Now, if you look really close over there at input 8, not input 8, the first group of 8. Let me zoom in on that. Okay. If you look here, you can see an underline on input 2. Okay. If you remember, I had just got done applying a force on input 2. So input 2 is forced. And that underline is telling me it is forced. No matter what I do over here, pushing the button, it's not going to change because it's forced on right now. If I push the one that's next to it, input 1, you see it change. Now it's a 1. Okay, now it's a 0. Now I'm going to push input 3. You can see it toggling and changing, okay? So what's nice about this reference view of looking at, you can look at all of your inputs at one time. You look at every single input. So if you're going and testing, say you have a, a morning checklist, a morning test, and you want to make sure that all of your sensors on the line are working, okay? If you're working out, um, say, an amusement park, and you want to test all of the inputs, every sensor that's on the track, you have one person that's out going on the track and says, "Okay, I'm out at input number, I'm out at input number six. Okay, so you can click on six. I'm at six. Okay, not operated. Okay, I'm operating it. Not operated. Operating it." You can see it toggle. Okay, fine. Now we go on to the next one. Okay? So it climbs on over to input number seven. Okay? You can click on that. Not operating. Operating. Okay? You can use this in a number of different ways. You don't need to have a program set up and look through all the program, look through all your switches, everything. All of your inputs are right here. Okay? And you can do this with any of the value, any of the type of inputs. I'm going to show you an analog input reference table next. So I'm going to close this table here. And I'm going to put analog input and bring it up. It's going to go out, read everything that's out there. And I'm going to come over here and move. Okay. Move right there. Okay. Now, I'm going to have to open up the box here to get access to it. Bear with me. There we go. And we've got some analog inputs here. Okay? And you can see that number changing. Okay? It's up to 1023, right? Okay? 1022. And this is... Okay. And you can see those different values. So you can see the value of the analog input. Okay. What's really nice about this is you can use this to verify that you're connected properly to your sensor. 
that your sensor is operating without having to run a program. You can use this as part of your troubleshooting tools. You bring it up, take a look at it, you can see what's connected out there. Okay, we're good to go. All right? Any questions about that? What did you do to make it change? What did you turn on the PLC? What, on the PLC, on this particular PLC, and your PLCs have this, and we'll be using this in lab number eight. Directly above your serial connector are two small potentiometers if you look inside there. And you can adjust those. You can adjust those potentiometers for a different value. So you can see I've got a maximum of 1,023, and I'll turn it down to a minimum of... 725. It's showing one, but the minimum is going to be one or zero, depending on the resistor that's connected there. And what does that represent? What units? No units. Okay? They're unitless right now. Okay? And I can adjust these back and forth. Turn it. It's just a little small trim pot that's inside there. Okay? And uh, you can adjust that, get it all set up, okay? Now, what we're going to be doing with lab number four, um, lab number eight, we're going to be using one of those to simulate a, a fluid metal detector. Zero is going to be tank is minimum. 1,000 will mean the tank is, is full, okay? And you'll be doing math on that. And so that'll be zero to 100%. Right? Then the other one will be zero to a thousand, will represent zero to a hundred percent speed for your variable speed drive. Okay? And we're going to have our different setting levels. Okay? And uh, we're going to work with that, but by setting those two inputs, one of them you can simulate the, the flow, the, not the flow amount, but how high the tank is. So we'll be representing a, a, a level a sensor. It's representing the output of a sensor, okay? Yes. Yeah, I have a question. That one has some relation between 4 milliamps and 20 milliamps? Because you can that convert that. You can convert that, but no, this is a voltage input, okay? The milliamp is a current input, okay? It's a current input, and we can talk about that on different sensor types, but this would be a voltage input of 0 to 100% of whatever voltage you're monitoring. For instance, if your reference voltage on an analog input was 10 volts, okay? Zero volts would be zero. 10 volts would be 1,023. If that same reference, that analog input was five volts, then zero, okay? Zero would be, again, zero, and five volts would be 1,023. It all depends on what your reference voltage is, and everything is off of that reference. So you have to do a ratio. Yes, and you do the little math and everything. So if I wanted to create a voltmeter, I, needed to, I would need to know what my reference is, read that voltage, do the scaling, and display a voltmeter up there. Okay? All right. Is that good? Yeah. Okay.